Hey, this is Greg Fine and welcome back to The Code Creative. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create smooth page transition animations in React using the Frame or Motion Animation Library. And page transitions are animations sort of like you're seeing here, where instead of just an abrupt reloading of the next page, we have things like smooth fade-ins and fade-outs, as well as pages that slide in and slide out, just like these examples. So let's actually get into some code now so we can see how to set this up using Frame or Motion and React. So this is the code example I have for this video, and we're going to walk through it completely. But first I just want to kind of give you a little demo of what it is. And if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I like to keep things very simple. So what I'm trying to show here is the mechanics behind how to create these page transition animations. And so I'm not doing anything fancy style-wise. But when you go through this video, you're going to learn the basic technique behind how to do this, and you can create any kind of animation you like, along with any styling that you like. So in this code example, we have two routes. We have a home and an about route. These would be two pages in my application. So here we are on the home page, and then if I go to the about page, we see that transition animation. And let's focus in on exactly what's happening here. So when I go to the new route, when I click on about, First of all, we see this content, all the content on the home page, we see it play an exit animation. And that exit animation is this content fading out, as well as translating a little bit along the y-axis, which is why you see it moving up. And then as soon as that finishes playing out, the content for the About page plays its entrance animation, which fades in and also moves up a little bit on the y-axis into place. So I'm going to click About again and see if you can notice those Exit and Enter animations happening. So that was pretty quick. Let's slow it down a little bit so we can really absorb that transition and see what's going on. Let's slow it down to about three seconds. All right, so I'm going to click About and then we'll see this fade out and also move up a little bit. So here's the Exit animation of Home and here's the Enter animation of About. And if we go back to speeding that up, we can see it gives a nice, smooth, quick transition. All right, with that little demo out of the way, let's take a look at how our code is actually working. So I've created my React project using Vite. And for this particular project, I'm using React Router DOM, so that's a package that you'll have to install. If we take a look at my package.json, we can see React Router DOM here with its version. And as well, you'll also need to install Frame Motion if you haven't done that yet. All right, so once you have all those installs done, the next thing we can do is take a look at our main app.jsx file. So I'm going to close package.json, make a little bit more room on the screen. And you'll notice in this app.jsx file that we have three components in here. We have an animated routes component, we have a page wrapper component, and we have our main app component. Let's start by looking at our app component. So in our app component, we basically have two things. We have our nav bar, which is this here, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. And then we have the different routes and the contents associated with them. And they're all wrapped with this browser router component. And that's sort of like the big daddy component from React Router DOM. It's the thing that communicates with the history API in your browser and manages loading up different components based on the URL. So as promised, let's next look at the nav component. So here in the nav component, we're returning a nav element, and that has two LIs inside, one for each of these links, home and about. And the important thing here is that we're using the link component from React Router DOM. And because we're creating a single page application with React, we're using the link component in place of what you would normally use, which would be anchor tags. And that's because we don't want to reload the page, but actually we want to communicate to the browser router component that this is the path that we want to navigate to. And that's all there is to the nav component. And by the way, if you want a quick peek at the CSS, here are the CSS styles I created. I did these pretty quickly, so I'm not sure if they're the best, but they serve the purpose for this example. But anyway, let's go back to our app.jsx file. And the next thing we'll look at is this animated routes component. All right, so animated routes is up here. And first of all, we're bringing in this use location hook from React Router DOM. And what that does is it gets us all the information about the current URL. So to see that, let's just log that out really quickly to the console. And let me bring that up a little bit. Let's clear the console. And let's go back to the home page. And here you can see what we're getting. 
we're getting this object. This is that location object. And it has different things like the hash, which we're not currently using, the key, path name, search, state, and so on. And in a minute, we'll find out why we're using this in our component. But let's get rid of this console.log for now and take a look at what we're returning from this animated routes. So I want you to focus first on this routes component and then these individual route components that are enclosed within it. Now, each of these individual route components is a child of this parent routes component. And when a user clicks on one of these links, well, that link component that was clicked communicates to the browser router to look at these various routes and find the path that matches that particular link. So for example, here, when the path is at slash, the component that it's going to render is the home component. And likewise, when the path is at slash about, the element or component that's going to be rendered is the about component. So let's take a look at those two components now. So first we'll look at the home.jsx. And this is just a very ordinary component, nothing special happening here. We're just returning a div with an h1 and a p tag with some more mipsum text. And we're pretty much doing the same thing for the about page or the about component. All right, let's close those out and let's go back to app.jsx. And you'll also notice that each of these components, home and about, they're enclosed in these page wrapper components. So let's look at page wrapper. Page wrapper is right here. And page wrapper is a component that takes in children and it outputs those children, but wrapped in a div. And you can see that those divs are prepended with the motion dot, which is what turns them into frame or motion animatable divs. And that's what allows us to use these special animation props on it. And we could put these animation properties on each of the components separately but I'm doing it this way with children, just as an easy way to create the same exit and animations for each page. So let's look at these animation props now. So we've got initial, animate, exit, and transition. So initial represents the starting state for the animation. So since we want a fade in, we're starting with an opacity of zero. And since we also want to move the content a little bit up on the Y axis on the page, we're starting with it a little bit offset, a little bit further down on the page, so 20 pixels down on the y-axis. And then the animate prop is where we put the properties and values for the animated state, basically where we're going to. And these two things are used for the enter animation. So this is the fade up from opacity of zero to an opacity of one, and this is the translate up on the y-axis. So starting a little bit down 20 pixels and then moving up to zero. And then for the component's exit animation, we're fading the component out, so we're going back to an opacity of zero. And we're also moving the content a little bit up on the y-axis, so we do negative 20 pixels. And we're setting our duration for 300 milliseconds, or 0.3. And again, we get this. All right, so here's where we get to the real magic, and this is by using the animate presence component from Frame or Motion. Animate presence is the component that we're wrapping our routes with, and it's the thing that allows these exit animations to play out and the enter animations to play out and to do so in a synchronized way when the different routes are switched. So this is where that location object comes into play or comes into use. You see, animate presence works by detecting when a component is about to unmount from the DOM, and by using the location object, in particular, the location.pathName for the key, when that path name gets updated, it generates a new value for the key. And so that tells Animate Presence that this is now a new component, and it's a component that renders the appropriate route for the path that we're on. The other thing you'll notice on the Animate Presence component is that we're using a prop called Mode, and that's set to Wait. And what that does is it ensures that the animation, or the exit animation of the current component, gets a chance to fully play out before the animation of the new incoming component fires its enter animation. So you can see the difference. If we set mode to sync, which is actually the default, you can see the difference now in the way that the animation transitions play. It doesn't look quite right because we don't have that nice synchronization happening anymore. But if we set it back to wait, now we can see the difference.